is from Brooklyn, which we call Little Uzbekistan. Because <laughs> the latest number is what, 25,000 Uzbeks? Official residents of uh, Brooklyn Borough. So, go ahead. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, this is my, uh, like we can't say historical day because I'm as a guest panelist, first time in my life. <laughs> and thank you for the Uzbekistan Initiative and Navajo uh, Imamba. So, Vatandar Uzbek American Federation um, is a, as a community center uh, in New York, uh, established in uh, 2013 as a non-profit non-for-profit organization <coughs> because of this newspaper. Batandash Uzbek newspaper is first uh, newspaper in New York. Uh, articles and different topics and uh, information about immigrants, about America. And after that, people, they start calling us and ask about uh, like different type of uh, information about America. and. Uh, information for new immigrants. And after that, uh, we had um, some uh, active people who worked uh, as an uh, activist in uh, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, we decided to open this uh, Batan Dorsh's Big American Federation as a non-profit organization. So, uh, so this uh, is, a, is it's a, like a to help for new immigrants, uh, it's very important thing uh, because usually when immigrants come to new countries, they don't know uh, first, uh, they don't know language, they don't know the legal system, they don't know uh, new cultural, uh, traditional things. So that's why they have uh, different type of problems. And um, so our community center serves as a venue for cultural, <coughs> educational, sports and religious activities so here uh, so we uh, this is a gift for new member so we have a membership uh, for like monthly in yearly uh, if uh, people wants to join us they can uh, take a uh, different type of information about the, our organization and of course uh, uh, new life in uh, New York City so this is Wall Street, New York City. Uh, we uh, when uh, actually it's like five or six years now. Uh, we have uh, uh, like in uh, Uzbekistan Independence Day, we have a flag raising ceremony in Wall Street uh, with Turkestan American Association and uh, General Consulate of uh, uh, Uzbekistan, which is in New York City. So and this last year actually we are organized. Um, big uh, car parade, it's Independence Day car parade in New York City and this was the biggest I think event in our history because um, uh, w we tried to show to American people and uh, other immigrants about uh, Uzbekistan because when you say I'm from Uzbekistan say they, oh nice to meet you, you are from Pakistan so <laughs> Uzbekistan is not Pakistan so uh, that's why we try to show our flag, our Independence Day, and our uh, about our country. So uh, it was very good event. Uh, even uh, police departments they helped us to organize this uh, event. Uh, you can see people very proudly with our flag, and this car like cars. It was uh, amazing. I mean, and this summer, last summer, uh, we organized a summer camp in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, it was first uh, experience, actually, by the way, he's my son. 
which is his American flag in Uzbek tradition at the Dofa. Uh, it was very nice uh, because uh, we provided like uh, uh, classes in Uzbek language because you know uh, to be immigrant is good, but we have some problems uh, for our children because uh, they they have to. We are trying to keep our Uzbek culture, Uzbek uh, language, and of course uh, religion. So uh, we try to um, teach them about um, Uzbekistan and uh, our national flag and our like history, Uzbek history. Uh, and we have planned to continue this uh, summer camp. Uh, it calls Balajan uh, in this year, so we have a plan and. Uh, this is embassy of Uzbekistan uh, because we came um, to um, to visit Uzbekistan uh, embassy with our uh, ESL students. Actually, uh, Vatandash uh, opened like uh, English, Russian, and English uh, Uzbek classes in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, we have very good um, uh, connection with the uh, Manhattan uh, Community School. And uh, they, they have, we are using their classes uh, and we have uh, students there who, who learned like uh, basic English. And also, uh, this is very uh, exciting news because uh, he's, he's uh, Mr. Eric Adams, who's first, uh, now he's a new, uh, uh, we don't live, uh, Uzbeks, uh, they live in, close to ocean, which is Brighton Beach, uh, Ocean Parkway area. Now it calls uh, Little Uzbekistan too, because if you go, you can see a lot of uh, Uzbek people there. And um, also, uh, we have a, a space, which is, uh, uh, we can, you, people can use as a library uh, to come and to learn, uh, uh, to get some information, uh, about the immigrants and it was very nice uh, because of Uzbekistan um, Embassy and uh, General Cons Consulate of Uzbekistan in New York City they uh, actually gave us a bunch of uh, books from Uzbekistan like uh, literature books and uh, for first, second, uh, third grades uh, books which is in Uzbek because we need that cannot find in America and that's why we are trying to uh, teach them based on that books uh, it's very helpful um, so uh, of course uh, we have uh, some problems we have Latin Dodge faces several challenges such as limited space and resources for activities as well as volunteers from the community it also needs to work closely with New York City Mayor's Office. The community needs to help fighting domestic violence and provide legal services. Actually, I would like to uh, pay more attention for domestic violence. In the uh, last three years, we can say, domestic violence is very high in New York City among Uzbeks. Actually, I'm doing now uh, my research paper in the domestic violence seminar uh, course. I I think that the topic is very interesting. Uh, domestic violence among Uzbeks in New York area. Uh, why uh, we uh, you can ask why the domestic violence and divorce is very high because of uh, several uh, pro uh, aspects. Because uh, people they don't know English. Because you, if you know uh, DB lottery doesn't require like uh, English uh, language. So actually I came in 2007 by DV Lottery. Uh, when I came, I didn't speak in English. I just knew how much card, give me card, potato, kind of basic things. But uh, after that, uh, I took uh, evening classes in uh, community college. So uh, I can give example. We need, I mean, new immigrant needs to learn English because uh, after we opened Vatandosh newspaper and the Vatandosh Uzbek Federation, we had a lot of uh, different calls, uh, like Uzbek people, they asked help. I can give the example. One guy uh, who is around 40 years old, he worked as a home attendant uh, without English because he knows Russian. He worked with a, a Russian man in the 20th 
five uh, highest floor and he lived in 16th floor and one when he had lunch time because he uh, worked very close to Verizona Bridge which, which is close to the ocean and he's an interesting guy he decided to see that ocean from 25th floor I mean roof and he went to the highest floor and he saw this sign warning sign do not cross beyond the sign line but even that because of he doesn't have English so that's why he, he didn't know what's the, the sign he opened the uh, door and he went to up and after three minutes the alarm worked of course after three minutes police came and they arrested and after that he's called okay I didn't understand I just I would like to try to see ocean and enjoy from roof because of language problem he they arrested him and after that we called them and we explained the situation sorry you know and the police of course they helped them uh, but in this case, I mean, if because of language, uh, he crossed the line, and the, because of that, they arrested. We have different uh, problems, like it, it was uh, one example. And um, so that's why um, we, w our focus is uh, mostly to help uh, for immigrants for basic information. Uh, we mentioned, uh, actually, thank you for Tasha Bus because. Um, they are giving a lot of uh, good legal information uh, for the new immigrants, and uh, of course the Watandosh newspaper, and uh, thanks uh, to support new immigrants. So, uh, yeah, if uh, we, we uh, published uh, like long time ago, not long time ago, uh, about uh, domestic violence, uh, <coughs> the topic was uh, are we ready to start new life in America? So after the topic, some I, I got some comments from Chicago, from California, Uzbek. So as I said, everything is okay in California, everything is okay in Chicago. Maybe yes, because less people there. In New York, like majority Uzbeks, Uzbekistan's immigrants, they live in New York area. So we have a domestic violence problem because they don't know. Uh, sometimes they don't know how to explain to police. But even husband or wife. They don't, uh, maybe they don't call to 911, but neighbors, when you fight, of course, neighbors can call and they can come and they can arrest very easily because of uh, that uh, problem. So th that's why it's very important to work uh, with Uzbeks. And we had another article about uh, uh, that uh, last incident uh, the, who tried to join to ISIS, uh, three, three Uzbeks, and after that we uh, I wrote one uh, article about uh, why this kind of thing is happening and uh, some, uh, so the Vatandosh, Vatandosh Uzbek American Federation's uh, purpose is not to control people. We cannot control because they have a right, we are in freedom, I mean a free country, which is some people, they uh, looks misunderstood that uh, control, uh, we, we, we cannot, it's impossible to control new immigrants, we don't want to control them. So we just, we, our purpose is to show good and right direction, to uh, have a successful life, successful uh, start in this new country. So, because no point to control them and why we need to control them. Uh, so that that's the main goal, to help for new immigrants. So, um, and um, so we are proud of our work with Uzbek immigrants. If you are interested to get involved, we are help to help. Please <laughs> join us. Keep calm and join Batandosh. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, um, let's listen to Berzot now, who has been managing Batandosh newspaper. Um, the newspaper has now gone online, right? It doesn't get published yes. in paper. Mm -hmm. I don't have any slides. So yes, I will briefly, briefly discuss about the development of Uzbek print media, particularly Vatan Dosh newspaper in the US. What was the initial objective for establishing an Uzbek newspaper in the US? What were the challenges? And after the five years of operation, what is the situation right now? What are the challenges and new opportunities? 
So we will talk about these questions. So Vatantosh, which translates into English as fellow countryman or compatriot, is a monthly newspaper published in Uzbek in Brooklyn, New York City. And we aim to serve the people of Uzbekistan and Central Asia who speak Uzbek language and number, according to our estimates, more than 300,000 across the states of America. Most of them live in New York City and neighboring cities and states. I was a second year graduate student when uh, Farhad Sultan, our publisher and currently the president of Vatan Gosh, Uzbek American Federation, contacted me and told me about his plans to open a newspaper in Uzbek, in New York City, and we worked together, we devised the plan and discussed about the general direction of the newspaper, what topics to cover, what not to cover, etc. And so from the very beginning it was our intention to avoid covering issues that are politically sensitive and such news about Uzbekistan because our main objective was to engage with as many Uzbek immigrants as possible who live abroad and uh, we considered this approach and as it is stated in our about page on our website our main objective is to help the people of Uzbekistan who immigrate to the US uh, to help them adapt to and integrate into new life in America and help them preserve their language and culture. Since our approach was not to pay much attention to political news, initially there were a lot of rumors, accusations from some opposition groups, some individuals that this newspaper was a government project. As an editor of this publication and as someone who was with this project since the beginning, I can tell you that it's not a government project. We didn't get any help from the embassy or from any other government agency, whether it's financial or in any other ways. So Farhat Sultan, our publisher, was active in shaping the direction of the newspaper, but I was, as an editor, I was free to choose what to select for publication or what not to select. So there was no external interference. The biggest challenge for us was the financial side of the project. If you know there are dozens, if not hundreds, of Russian language media outlets in the US, each one of them has its own share from the Russian-speaking audience who come from post-Soviet countries and almost all of them make some profit. They are profitable, that's why they are running these businesses. That's why our expectation was that we could at least make some profit which would be enough to cover the operational uh, expenses and we would continue without interruption. However, the reality was very tough. Yes, we had revenue from advertisements and most of the time it was enough to cover the expenses, but it was not a lot and it was not regular. That's why it was financially very tough for us to continue the publication because we didn't have a lot of resource, resources, financial resources to invest. Most of them was from our publishers' personal contributions. And we knew that if, we, if you don't invest a lot of money, especially in the US, you can't expect a very fina financially successful business. This was, I think so. the blame is just for us. So I blame, I would blame ourselves for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what is the situation right now? Well, I think this question will tell you the main part of our story. Right now, okay, from the January of this month, we stopped printing the print version of our newspaper due to financial hardships. Uh, it operated almost five years. We almost published every month, initially twice a month, but unfortunately, due to financial problems, we decided to stop the print version, but our website is still online. We are regularly and almost daily updating it. So I think 
there is still a great need for such publications in Uzbek for the community because especially given the recent incidents about the arrest of three Uzbek men who are allegedly associated with ISIS uh, it's more important and there's more greater need for such projects because this publication used to give the community about uh, to know what is going on in their community to keep them more engaged with each other also in certain ways it would it would educate them on how to be a good law abiding citizens and I think it's important that we, we should continue the pu publication and find ways to raise finances to continue our work. I want to talk a little bit about the role of our newspaper that had in like building some connections between Uzbek immigrants in the US and uh, our motherland Uzbekistan. From the beginning, well, we have a lot of readers from Uzbekistan. We know from our website, we have between Uzbek immigrants in the US and uh, our motherland, Uzbekistan. From the beginning, well, we have a lot of readers from Uzbekistan. We know from our website, we have close to 20,000 Facebook likes on our Facebook page. And uh, most of them, I, I can't tell exactly, but we have a lot of readers from Uzbekistan. And from the beginning, we wanted to engage with Uzbekistan because our I would consider our immigrant community relatively young compared to other ethnic groups in the in the U.S. It's, I, I don't. I'm not talking about this old generation of Uzbeks who came during Soviet period, but this after the immigrants who came to the U.S. after the independence, they are very young. They are still connected to Uzbekistan, and we want to bring some news that would be interesting for the immigrants about Uzbekistan and we, we would cover some changes that would affect our immigrants about, for example, travels to Uzbekistan or bringing certain items, all this stuff, definitely. And also a lot of Uzbeks from Uzbekistan, they were interested in our newspaper, they would write articles, they would always comment about our work. And this is, this is the basically uh, the situation right now we have. Thank you. <laughs>